Yo guys, this is Matty. Welcome to Coach Talk. This is part three of this particular installment with this group of coaches. Uh, today our topic is how has your training and coaching philosophy evolved over the years? Got a really cool bird up here making all kinds of noise. Star of the show. Oh, now you're shy, huh? Now Nipsey's shy. Anyway, grab yourself a cold beer, protein shake, whatever you like to do, and enjoy. we got a really good interview coming up. I came up, I came up like a lot of guys, uh, bodybuilding, just because that's, for, for a long time, that's where everybody got their information, magazines and, and, you know, different bodybuilding books. Um, and, and my, my whole training philosophy actually kind of evolved by accident. I tore my ACL and I kind of had to, to work around it. And that's when I started to get a little bit more into performance training. And I started to realize that you can, my old philosophy, I thought in order to be big, you had to do bodybuilding. That was it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I was kind of mistaken in that, in that regard because there is a balance. You can be, you can be big and strong and still be very athletic. And when I was bodybuilding, I had no athleticism. My athleticism from high school went straight downhill. Um, but it's come back since because I've been mixing in different training styles. And, and I think, I mean, I feel a ton better now and, and my body and my joints feel a ton better. And I'm, I'm still probably almost as strong as I was when I was completely bodybuilding. Um, but I'm definitely more explosive now, you know. So there is there is a relationship with strength training and performance training and muscle building. And I think a lot of people fail to see that. They think it's either bodybuilding or performance training, you know, or strength training. So there is definitely a marriage there. And um, I try to instill that in my athletes and just let them know that you can do both with as long as the programming is right. You know, you can definitely get both. I look at it now as everything has its place uh -huh. as long as it's used correctly. It was. Yeah. So I started like a lot of people did, and that was with bodybuilding magazines. That was it. That was as far as we knew fitness was. You know, men were supposed to be. Uh, I, I was coming out of the '80s at that point. It was the early '90s, and men were supposed to be big and mighty. Uh, um, Chris Dell talks about it in Bigger, Stronger, Faster. You know, we were all influenced at that period of time by the Stallones and the Schwarzeneggers. Mm -hmm. We. That's what manhood was supposed to be. And, it, you know, you don't see anything that actually represents strength. It's just size and, and, and largeness. And, and so at that period, when I got into this, uh, my, handing my, my first ducats over at a gym membership, I, I was about 127 pounds in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, I'm, I want to put on so much muscle that people fear and respect me. I don't know, whatever the motivation was. Mm -hmm. Something... Uh, well, several things. You know, I spent time doing that, and I, you, you do the same, what, basic 10 exercises all the time. You get your presses and your curls and your tricep thingies and whatever. And, you know, one day maybe you squat, but I doubt it. It's usually the leg press. You know, so you're doing the same really boring thing over and over, thinking somehow you're increasing, you're improving yourself. But I thankfully had something, uh, you know, I don't even know if I have it anymore, but I had it back then, and it was something my parents blessed me with, and it was a self-esteem. And, and the self-esteem said, look, the scale and the mirror don't mean anything to you right now. It's not like, I'll be frank, it's not like you're getting laid a heck of a lot more. It's not like people are falling at your feet and saying, hey, look, look how mighty you are. Uh, even though I packed on about 50 pounds of muscle, it wasn't, it wasn't changing my life. And somehow during that period, I, I started... Uh, uh, latching on to people who are doing some really cool things and strength athletics and, and, and powerlifting. I got into powerlifting, eventually Olympic weightlifting, and eventually kettlebells and all that stuff. And I realized, oh, ability and strength are far more empowering than just what the scale or the mirror are telling me. You know, uh, you know for a while there, I kind of went through the phase, I think we all go through this phase where first you're a bodybuilder, then you're a powerlifter, then you're an injured powerlifter. Then you're a functional training guy. You know, I know it's been said, but we definitely, you know, we went to where it was like, okay, barbells are bad. It's just sandbags, kettlebells, you know, and they do get great results. But now we're starting to go back to the bar. We're seeing great results. If you do it right, you do it smart. So we try to just implement. There's no right tool. We don't like to be married to one tool. It's more of a, we look at the body movement, the pattern. That That's our philosophy. is really stuck on those squatting, hinging, pushing, pulling movements, and I, it's so simple, and people usually disregard it, but it's great because now I don't have to, if you got access to a normal gym, great, barbells, dumbbells. If you don't, 
buy a kettlebell or grab a rock. It, it, it doesn't really matter. We can help you program and train for those movement patterns. It's opened up a whole new world of just looking at the patterns and not the tool. Yeah. But in terms of my own personal training now, I'm very um, – I've simplified my life a lot. I'm focusing on gymnastics, my own bodily control. Uh, with parallettes and ring training, mm-hmm. and my Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Mm-hmm. And outside of that, I try to be as active as I can with my sons and with my two dogs. So I hear you have a puppy over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She likes to make her noise. Yeah, so um, I remember you saying something along the lines of some of the oldest and happiest people are the on, in the world are just the ones that are like constantly moving. And you don't need to have extreme intensity. And I, I think that's something that's really popular now. It's it's go ham or don't go at all. Hard as a mofo or uh, or, it's, or it's worthless. And I, I find that to be, you know, we're kind of missing something big now. You know, it's uh, I think I, I really in, enjoy, you know, your concept of playing and pleasure. And not everything has to be, you know, a do or die experience, you know, or, you know, it's it's feel like you're on the, the, the verge of death or it's worthless. I, I do I do know that there's, you know, times for intensity. It depends on your you know, your your personal goals, what you're trying to accomplish. Are you trying to win a championship or are you trying to feel good as a mother and, and raise your kids? Personally I would say we've gone through all all the usual bullshit, you know, you split routines, you this, you that. It, we've just done a full circle from being a bodybuilder to being a powerlifter. Uh, to Fast so, you one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but more, 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 more. Just coming back to common sense, that doing simple things, doing your bodyweight movements. You know, just like a lot of what you guys preach. It's like do your handstand work, do your dips, do do your presses, do your chin, but then just do a lot of it. Um, and what I've found a lot with the athletes is that strength, strength room, uh, strength. Sorry, um, strength in the weight room doesn't really relate to maybe outside on the field. A lot of people get too carried away looking at numbers, looking at this when. Like you know, when they can't even move properly, so it's like it's like educating people that side of things. That if they get stronger here, yeah, that's good. But has it carried over? If not, then you know what's the point of doing it? Um, I have gone full circle because I rem- I always remember that when we trained the guys out of the garage, they were strong, they were explosive, they were mentally tough, they were very well conditioned, they were athletic. Bound to a gym, we did a lot of our training outdoors, whether it be in the backyard or whether it be at the playgrounds. We were sprinting. Um, even my ball players, I taught them how to hand fight. And then I remember when I um, transitioned to the warehouse, <clears throat> to the gym, we were. I was very focused on just being strong. It was highly influenced by Louis Simmons, who constantly was saying that strength is the key, strength is the answer. And that's when I realized that. Um, and I put out blog posts on this that you could be strong and useless. We had guys that were uh, floor pressing 315 for three to five reps. They could deadlift on the trap bar 495. They could box squat 405. But then I remember having one of those big guys do farmer walks with just a plate on each side of the farmer handles, which is only 110 pounds. After one set, he was shot. No work capacity. Another kid, like, he would like tweak his lower back carrying that. And that's when I started to realize, and I was like, shit, like these guys are strong and useless. They're a friggin' big waste on the football field. They're always getting hurt. They've got no mental toughness. They've got no work capacity. Um, they didn't have, they weren't like the big picture of what you need an athlete to be. And I look at today at our athletes, and we have so many smaller, lighter athletes. We've had wrestlers here. Many of our wrestlers weigh like 120 to 145. But we've had kids that weigh 130 that farmer walk more than those big guys that were squatting and deadlifting 500 pounds. Um, They could run a mile extremely fast. They could jump high. They could handle high-intensity workouts with heavy weights. They're very athletic. And I go back and, uh, and I'm trying to actually mimic a lot of the stuff we did from when we trained in the garage and we're so much better off. One thing I've paid more attention to is a lot more mobility. Just over health. Although, I, I must say that I did speak with a uh, physical therapist who used to be uh, in the NFL and works with a lot of powerlifters. And he said, you know, five years ago or so when we weren't into all this mobility prehab, he goes, I'm not sure if we, he goes, I think we saw 
that somebody's back may have been a little bit rounded or their hips were a little bit tight. He goes, but we didn't freak out about it. We didn't stop them from squatting because their feet turned out too much. And he goes, and nobody died. He goes, everybody was fine. He goes, now we're paying attention to so many details that we've kind of uh, just like, uh, I, you know, I call it, we just pussify the workouts. My training has, for me, I'm, I am a lifelong martial artist. I've been doing martial arts for about 30 years now. Um, and my training has always been geared towards how can I improve my martial art ability and how can I increase strength, coordination, agility, and all of those physical characteristics within um, my martial arts practice. And then from there, it's kind of evolved into how can I do that for my students, and then how can I uh, do that for other people who come into the facility? And what I've noticed is that a lot of people who may not be martial artists per se, they really enjoy this type of physical training. Uh, they, you know, it's a very different style of training. We do a lot of, um, underground type of stuff, you know, we've got the tires, we've got chains, we've got sledgehammers, um, rope climbing, kettlebells, club bells, and it that a lot of the general population that I train really starts to get into this, this type of uh, old school stuff, and they they find that, you know, it pushes them to their limits, they find, um, you know, a new way to train, and they... They start to become tougher, individuals, mentally, and even spiritually. It's funny. Even when we had that CrossFit Philly back in 2005, we were not a very typical affiliate. And that's one reason why we dropped the affiliation fairly early on. I think we were an affiliate for a year. Uh-huh. It's because 90% of our clientele did not enjoy those workouts, did not come in to the facility looking for those workouts. I already had a good name in that neighborhood already. I was an established uh, trainer in that neighborhood already. But people did not, I'm sorry, but very few moms care to learn Olympic lifts. Right. Right? They don't, they're not, and this is, you know, we can look at this a couple different ways, but they don't want to learn the skills. Mm -hmm. They want to come in when they have 45 minutes and get an efficient workout and a good workout. Mm -hmm. And if you spend 45 minutes teaching them how to clean PVC, they don't necessarily want to pay you. Right, because they didn't get a good workout. Right. So we were not a very traditional uh, affiliate whatsoever. We did, we did, you know, circuit training, metabolic conditioning, whatever you want, and we had a couple, couple days which were strength bias. But on top of that, it was a, a very non-traditional affiliate, and that's one reason why we did drop it. No, I'm certainly not doing the same stuff. There's definitely, um, there's definitely an evolution, and any coach that doesn't evolve, especially if you start looking at over several years worth of time, is uh, they're a dead coach, so to speak, and that's that's not a good coach to be at. Um, the basic cornerstones of my programs are still there. I still base everything in strength, still base everything in powerlifting. That's the roots I come from. So that's there. Um, there's been a lot more refinement of the athleticism uh, getting away from, not getting away from, but changing from the like strict, you know, NSCA kind of rules of athleticism that we're doing hurdle drills and steps and this and that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But now I view athleticism from more of a whole body point of view. Um, I borrow a lot from martial arts. We do a lot more body weight and gymnastics movements than uh, I used to way back. Like, I mean, I use probably. On a regular basis, I probably use 25 versions of push-ups with my athletes. Mm-hmm. Um, I could probably sit here and rattle off 100 of them if I really wanted to. And that type of stuff, it used to be just push-ups. Now, you know, doing a lot of the body weight movements to really kind of set the foundation as well as to take that basic strength that's been built from the core of the power movements and teach the athlete how to use that strength to move it, their own body against their body's resistance and just promote, again, overall movement and athleticism. Yeah, absolutely. I think the biggest thing is, as a young guy, you know, we often think that we could just, you know, max out every week, or even if we're not maxing out, but just train with maximal weight week after week. 
Um, and I, you know, I believed in that since I started training. And now, you know, I'm definitely more into submaximal training, getting stronger using submaximal weights. And um, as an athlete, that's critical because if you're expending all your energy in the gym, you know, while uh, doing max effort training, that's going to take away from energy you need to develop your skill in whatever sport you play. So I think the biggest change I've made as a coach is using more submaximal weights and, you know, spending that other energy doing other skill work for a sport. Yeah, that's so. pretty much uh, come full circle. Um, just pretty much like I started out like most of us played sports, uh, wrestling and football were my two. Um, got into powerlifting because of my brother, and uh, that led me into strongman. Um, did that for five or six years. Competed all over the place and solely trained the strongman way, in a sense, like everything's heavy, in a sense. Um, and, and now it's come around full circle, understanding the power of body weight, um, really getting on those Olympic lifts and, and really working on my mobility more than anything else. Uh, to not limit me in the rest of my life. So the, the the initial evolution was understanding that if I want, if I'm spending all this time doing this, what's the point? You know, well, there's that why again. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? And again, I thank my parents for instilling that into me at a young age, always asking why, why, why. And I didn't have a good answer in the beginning. And so I thought, well, let's have a purpose. Uh, what does Steve Martin and the jerk talk about a special purpose? Mine was a little different. Um, and my special purpose eventually became, I want to be capable. I want to be, uh, and the, the term I use now, which is a term that it, it's so basic and yet so frightening, useful. Am I useful? Mm -hmm. And if you ask yourself that and you ask yourself that about your fitness routine, am I useful? It's a scary question to ask because what if you're not? Why the hell are you doing this? And eventually... I came to realize that the pursuit of strength and fitness and movement is, is usually a very selfish process. It's, it's very me, me, me centered. It starts and ends here. It's all about me and what I want and how it's going to uh, make me feel and that sort of thing. You know, am I going to get laid? Am I going to get better? Am I going to have people worship me? Whatever. That doesn't affect anyone else in a beneficial way, and I wanted it to eventually do that. And that's when I realized, well, instead of it just affecting me, instead of it being selfish, why can't fitness and strength actually be what I now call tribal? Mm -hmm. uh, does it affect the culture? Does it affect my tribe? Does it affect the people around me? Does it somehow? It is personal empowerment, which I think fitness ultimately should be. It's personal empowerment through movement, uh, even tribal empowerment through movement, if you're not bringing up those around you. Mm -hmm. uh, and the answer was no. You really can't self-actualize if somehow everyone else around you doesn't get better somehow. And it, that's when I realized I have to somehow change everything. Not just myself, but changing myself needs to better everything else. And therefore the question was, am I useful? Mm -hmm. Am I useful to anyone else? On a physical level, on a metaphysical level, on an inspirational level, uh, am I actually useful? And so that is the, now the, the kind of intimidating definition of fitness to me is it's the, the physical manifestation of holistic usefulness. Am I actually pursuing usefulness? Mm -hmm. Hey, I want a bigger bicep to, hey, am I being an actual productive member of society? And, and that is, a, you know, for me, that's a pretty big evolution. I'm hoping it would be for a few people. And, it's something that continues all the time. I'm always paying attention to detail. I'm always paying attention to technique. But I did find myself at times being too much of a baby and being too worried about, oh, no, like uh, his mobility, his hips, his, you know. Now, really back to, you know what? We need to get you guys fucking tough. We need to get you guys tough. And I can't be constantly worrying about the fact that uh, you have uh, tight hips and your T-spine is uh, not so mobile. And I just found myself not really pushing people. So uh, I'm back to pushing with high intensity and, uh, you know, pro I guess, so to speak, back to breaking the, the quote-unquote rules <laughs> of what so many, you know, experts say you must follow. And you know what? We don't have anybody getting hurt when we lift. And if people are getting injured when they're out there, you know, in sport, you know, we've got combative athletes. We train football players and wrestlers, so they get banged up no matter what. But our guys are performing um, at an all-time best, you know, and, our, and the, 
the truth is in the results. We, we're just sending more guys to higher levels of competition into better colleges, so it's going really well. So I've come full circle in that way, not totally focused on strength, more overall athleticism, mental toughness, and training outdoors, getting away from constantly training in the confines of a gym has been huge. A lot of, you know, I always said if I didn't live in an in, in area that had all these weather changes, like in the winter, and even that's not truly an excuse, but if I was out in like San Diego, or I, I probably would not own a gym and we'd be training outdoors. Being overly cautious doesn't prevent you from dying. It only prevents you from living. You know, so we, we hear all this stuff, you know, you can't do that if, if, they, if their back isn't perfectly flat when picking something up. So we become overly cautious or, as you say, pussified in, in a lot of things. Pretty soon we're not going to be able to do anything. Everyone's just going to have to put a cast on and just walk around in like quarter range of motion all the time. So that's awesome. So uh, it used to be all strength for you. Now you have a uh, – the, the underground system incorporates mobility, um, strength, the work capacity, and that's uh, a, a more – overall development of athleticism um, great philosophy you know, we just got started i've been training since you know 12 13 we all had that you know dingy bodybuilder gym with the nasty ass carpet that we all trained in uh-huh. and it's just you know i just turned 30 this year so for me i just started down the coaching route like i never planned on being a coach i never thought i would even consider coaching other people it was always just a passion we always like to lift and and to exercise and finally after these discussions like what me and you were having our wives, me and my partner, our wives would get sick of us talking for two, three hours on this shit. So they say, you know, why don't you guys do something with this? You know, you're the guy at work that everybody asks this stuff to. You might as well, you know, let, let's you turn that passion into a into a career. So I'm just happy to be talking to other like-minded coaches. I really appreciate you having me.